Hello, I'm Teacher Melai, and let us continue our discussion in using Gmetric. So first, you need to make sure that your data is already done, so it's already computed. You can use Microsoft Excel in encoding for your data. So just set to review how to encode the data, you need to give numerical values or codes for each of the letters so for example in multiple choice item test so what you need to do is for example you're going to encode letter i mean number one if the answer is letter a number two if the answer is letter b number three if the answer is letter c and number four if the answer is letter d so here the items for instance so let us do that so let's have uh, the first uh, throw as the item number so for instance this is item one item two item three so do not use again spaces in naming your variables and your initial data you might have uh, the respondents number but if you're going to use your data now ready for J metric, you have to remove the first column. So just assuming that this is now the number of items. So we have here items 1, 2, 3, and item 4. And then respondent 1, 2, until respondent number 40. So this is our data. So we can also add. So for example, this is until item, item 5. So let's add another item. So I'm just uh, using a dummy data, but later on, if you will consider now the actual data, make sure that all the data are correctly entered. So initially, you can uh, check your data, for example, if, for instance, I miss uh, to place or rather I... Uh, committed mistake in encoding instead of encoding uh, 2 here, I encoded 12. So if I'll check for that, so before analyzing for the data, you can conduct an initial test to sanitize your data and that is to determine the minimum and maximum. So to determine the minimum and maximum, what you need to do is to encode the command equal sign mean open parenthesis so you can see it here equal sign m i n open parenthesis and then select your data set so from the responses of item uh, of student one until student number four and then close the parenthesis click enter and also you can consider the maximum Again, that's equal sign, maximum, and then just uh, select again your data after placing the open parenthesis, then close parenthesis, and then click OK. So you can drag this and check if uh, all the minimum is 1 because we know that the letter, the, uh, the number rather given to letter A is 1 and the maximum is 4 which means the last letter, letter V is given a code of 4. So as you can see here, we have a data that is equal to 12. So let's make this uh, bigger. It's equal to 12 so which means we have to find if uh, where did we commit the mistake? So we can do that by simply clicking our column C, control F. Let's locate number 12. So this is number 12. So let us see. So it is respondent number 23. That's why it's also important that you give numbers to your respondent. So as you encode, make sure that you have to place the number of the respondent that is corresponding to the number that you set in your Microsoft Excel. So if you encounter this kind of problem, what you need to do is to go back 
to the paper of uh, this respondent and check if uh, the answer of the student is 1 or 2. So assuming I already found that the answer for this item is 2, so I have to replace it with 2. But you're not going to end there. You have to repeat the process again because it might be that the maximum is 12, but you still again encounter another number like instead of 12, there is one more number. It's 10 or it's 9 because what you set here is only the maximum. So it can be that there is or there are other numbers more than 12. So it can be 5, 6, 7 and above which, which needs to be again to be checked. So if you are already sure about your data, then we can already delete this part. So you can have another um, copy of this. But for the purpose of using this in the J metric, we're going to remove it. Even for the respondent number, we're going to remove this. So what we're going to retain here is only the items. So that's item one until until item number five. So what if the, the items or the type of question is not multiple choice? It's true or false. You can also um, do the same procedure. First, you have to make again a code. So let's say if the if it's a true or false, you can set a number for true. So let's say true is one, false is zero. So you just need to give a number for the responses. Okay, so we're done. So let's go back now to the JMetric software. So this is the JMetric software. Let's go back here. So in the previous video, we already constructed database where our table will be saved. So this is our JMetric software. So the next thing that we need to do is to save this because JMetric J metric recognize comma delimited the files only. So what we need to do is to save this as dot csv. So to do that, click file, save as, and then uh, let us uh, first locate. So for the meantime, let's place this in the desktop. Okay, so let's uh, just name it as sample. And then save as type, let's locate CSV, this one, comma, delimited. So click that and click save. So just click this OK. OK, and then I can close this now. And the next thing is you have to go now to your JMetric software. So in the manage, you have to click... So what we need to do is to import data. So click import data. Oops. So as I mentioned here, you must open a database before importing a data. So let's open first the data, the database. So manage open a database. So we created database in the previous video. We also opened database in the previous video. So for this, we have to do this again because we close the J metric, so we need to open it again. So we use the sample one, then just click open. So we have here the sample one. Or maybe, wait. Um, of course, uh, this this means that initially we already have data in our sample one. So what we need to do is manage and then import data. So what uh, we need to do is to locate our data file. So it is saved in our desktop. This is the desktop. So just click this. So this is the file that we save. It is the sample.csv. 
So variable names in first row. So we have to tick that because we use a variable name. And then the limiter is comma. And then click browse. And let's place here the file name sample one again. Then click import. Uh, sorry. So import. So this is now our data. Item one, item two, item three, item four, and item five. So this is until the last respondent, respondent number four. So next is uh, we also need to consider how will we place now the answer key because remember this is this is a item analysis this software is used for item analysis and the purpose why we imported our data here is for us to do the item analysis using the jmetric software so to place the answer key Click Manage. Ah, okay. Click Transform and click Advanced Item Scoring. So also, of course, you have to make sure that you have answered the test first or you have your answer key for that particular test before using the J metric. So for instance, if the answer for item number one, so let's say... What are the options? It's 1, 2, 3, and 4. For example, the answer for item 1 is A. So that's 1. So I have to place 1. 1.4, 1. And then we have to place 0, 0, 0, 4, 2, 3, 4. So we are setting here that the correct answer is 1. That's why I place a score 1. So for example, this is the answer key for item 1. So I have to place it here. It is also the answer for item number three. So I also need to place item number three. And then do not forget to click submit. So we are setting here that the answer for item number one. So as you notice here, it's already bold, which means we are done placing the answer key for item one and item three. So what if, for example, the answer now for item two is letter D, so this is 0, 0, and letter A is also 0. So you just need again to click this arrow. Uh, sorry, you have first to click the item and then the arrow. So we are saying now that the answer for item 2 is letter D and then click submit. So for example, our, eyes, uh, our answer for Item 4 and 5 is letter C. So I'll place 1 in number 3 and then place 0, 0, 0 with items 1, 2, and 4. Then again, we have to select number 4 and then number 5 and then click submit. So we're done placing the answer key of item 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 and then click Okay, so where can we find if uh, we are all set placing our answer keys? So if we're going to click the variables here, you can see that there is a scoring. So we can see here that 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 0, 0, 0. So it all corresponds now to the answer key. So what, do, what can um, JMetric do now? So we can actually analyze. So click Analyze. We can come up with Frequency. So we can select all of this and then Run. So it will provide you with the frequency of 1, 2, 3, 4 with its uh, percent including the cumulative and cumulative um, frequency and cumulative percent. And also click Analyze if you want also to come up with some descriptive so you can also do that this again click analyze descriptive so it can compute the minimum for its quartile mean standard deviation skewness maximum third 
quartal, median, and all, all others until kurtosis. So just click run. So all of the values that you need that is in the descriptive statistics will also be provided per item. So we have here one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, also for correlation, for example, if there are some items here that corresponds now to um, competency in a particular topic and another competency in particular topic and you want to find if there is a correlation, there is also a correlation in the analysis here. So for instance, are our items correlated? So we can just click again all the items and click run. So it will also provide you with correlation. And then lastly, of course, uh, the most important one, one, there are all other item analysis here like the rash model, but we're going to use this one, item analysis. So just click this. This is the most important, our main purpose of using our J metric. And then just uh, click now all again the, the items and the data. Click OK. So you can explore by clicking all of this. There's no problem if we're going to click all of this. And then just click run. So it will provide you now with the, the difficulty index, it, the discrimination index also. And if we're going down, test of level statistics are all provided together with the reliability analysis of it can be Gutmann's coefficient alpha, filed Gilmer, so it's up to you what to use and also reliability if item is or are deleted so it can be also seen here and the conditional standard error of measurement so to interpret this we are going again to do this in a separate video thank you for listening